I'm a Gavin Langlands Neurology Registrar here in Glasgow and the next few slides I'd just like to tell you a little bit about a Freud syndrome which refers to a syndrome that you might necessarily think about this picture quite a lot but I just haven't really come across the term that's used to describe it and the results that we find in this syndrome are maybe not as abnormal as we might expect they would be so I thought it would be interesting to talk about. So it was first described by a French physician uh, many years ago, and it really describes three CSF findings in the context of some form of spinal block. So you get an elevated CSF protein, a hypercoagulable CSF, so taking lumbar puncture, if there's delays, you think it's CSF lab, sometimes in really severe cases, that CSF can actually pump in your bottle. And then the CSF sampachromia, so that's sort of yellowish scroll discoloration. Um, apparently, uh, Dr. Freund did a lung function of someone with a spinal tumour, and that's where it was, was first described. So, the phenotype, the clinical presentation is variable given the broad etiology, and I'll mention that on the next slide. But I guess you would maybe think about a myelopathy, if you haven't done so already, if you've got these CSF findings, but also not forgetting causes of raised intracranial pressure. So, if someone presents with signs of raised intracranial pressure, obviously there's a broad differential, but you might also think about a spinal block that pushes your CSF pressure up um, and, and would cause your sort of raised intracranial pressure symptoms. So CSF flow is uh, a dynamic process. I would have associated problems with CSF flow intracranially around sort of pinch points, third, fourth ventricle, etc. But I guess just to remind you all that I guess we can't forget about spinal CSF blocks as well, which is pretty sort of different symptoms. In terms of Freud syndrome itself in this picture, the case reports and case studies out there, these are the causes and the bullet points that refer to the Freud syndrome. So common causes would be a, a spinal tumour, so a schwannoma or a pendomoma, an epidural abscess, but there are other causes to think about as well. So even severe spinal stenosis, this picture has been described in some cases. And also some endocrinal pathologies as well that might disrupt your meninges. So here's the being hypomyelitis, give this picture in a few cases. I guess there is a bit of a debate of what actually causes your rise in your CSF protein. Is it the underlying pathology that's driving that protein rise, or is it the CSF block itself that pushes that protein up? But I guess independent of cause, there seems to be an elevated CSF protein that's the predominant feature on number puncture results in these cases. In terms of other parameters in your lumbar puncture, the white cell count and red cell count is variable depending on the underlying cause, but the dominant feature seems to be this really elevated protein passing to the cell count. And I guess the point to note is I often associated CSF spinal blocks with a really markedly elevated protein level, but in a lot of these reported cases, the protein was sort of 1.35 grams and above, mostly maybe approaching 3 gram mark, but maybe not as high as you might expect. So if presented with this sort of CSF picture, high protein, low cell count, something to think about, I guess, obviously go clinically, but maybe think about spinal imaging in the form of MRI plus minus brain imaging. So in terms of what else could this be? Um, well, obviously you always go clinically and hopefully you wouldn't identify as anthrochromia in the context of a subarachnoid hemorrhage. Hopefully you would have caught, thought about that clinically before this, but if you presented with a patient where you've got the CSF findings, this triad, you proceeded to do imaging of the neural axis and there's no cause, then there's another differential to think about in terms of an elevated CSF protein, which are the usual lists. There's a nice practical neurology paper with, with a table on this, but really anything that can sort of irritate your meninges. And then there's a usual list of inflammatory, infective, immune, etc. Blood, uh, drugs, so alcohol and phenytoin were two that can elevate your CSF protein. And then metabolic extremes, so significant hypothyroidism, um, and also patients with diabetes would recognize sometimes CSF proteins elevated. And I thought I'd just finish with this description that always interests me, looking back at sort of earlier descriptions of conditions that despite all the advances in years, often early descriptions are often sort of right on point. So this is a description of Freud syndrome from 1921. So I'll just read it out. So this change takes place characteristically when the fluid in the lumbar cul-de-sac is completely cut off from communication with the fluid in the ventricles and cisterna magna. This may be produced of tumours or other diseases in the bones of the spine, of tumours of the meninges of cord, or by inflammatory adhesions in the pia membranes. 
the degree of change in the fluid depends more on the completeness of this block than on the nature of the blocking process. But certain constituents of the fluid may vary in relation to the nature of the obstruction. So, thank you.